1941, merchant shipping was at its height, trying to supply the British, Africans, and Russians with much-needed supplies, troops, cargo, and oil, due to being cut off by the Nazi wolf packs. Month by month, in 1941 and 42, vessels were sunk relentlessly to keep the Allies from getting supplies. Admiral Donitz of the Kriegsmarine was in charge of the German Navy at the time and had banded together some of Germany's top sub-aces to hunt these cargo vessels. The Allies needed an answer to the U-boat problem. Dire necessity. The Allies had finally come up with a plan to thwart the U-boat problem. The most versatile team ever put to the sea, the hunter-killer, was devised. This was compromised of destroyer escort team with a baby flat top. The baby flat top was a merchant ship with a makeshift runway built on top to launch Avenger sub-hunter planes from. The aerial patrols from land only had so much reach, but now with the baby flat tops, planes could be launched at sea and have a greater impact on the U-boats that were dominating the Atlantic. The destroyers were packed with deck guns, torpedoes, and depth charges and built to be light and maneuverable to hunt the U-boats. Captain Dan Gallery is the man in charge of the hunter-killer operations aboard the USS Guadalcanal, the baby flat top in the Atlantic, to show the effectiveness of the newly devised hunter-killer group. Task Group 22.3 Five destroyer escorts and the USS Guadalcanal embark on new orders to the west of Cape Verde Islands off the coast of Africa. The USS Pillsbury, Pope, Flaherty, Jenks, and Chatelaine are the destroyers de designated to protect the USS Guadalcanal. Captain Gallery wants to capture a U-boat during this mission, so he gets with his destroyer captains and comes up with a plan. If they can get a U-boat to surface, they will spray it with small arms fire and send small boats to board and secure it. The crews were training daily, going over aerial operations and, and boarding operations so that all the crews knew the mission inside and out. The crew was trained to take pictures of the inside of the U-boat in case it was too badly damaged to keep afloat, see what kind of medicines the Nazis had on the boat, and electronic specialists to check the batteries, components, and diesel engines. This would cover all necessary basis and gain vital intel. April 9, 1944. The task group was notified and searching for a U-boat that was spotted 150 miles west of French West Africa. It was U-515 commanded by Commander Werner Henke, a well-known sub-ace. Once spotted on sonar, the destroyers move in and start depth charging the sub. The Avengers also spot the sub, firing their guns and dropping depth charges. The destroyers continue the pursuit until the sub surfaces. The sub was badly damaged from the repeated depth charges near its hull. Eventually, the sub surfaces and the ships open fire. The crew saw the Germans pouring out of the sub and thought that they were going for the deck guns. The Avengers thought the same as they saw the Germans fleeing the sub's conning tower, so they opened fire as well. What was meant to be enough shooting to suppress the enemy turned out to be a lot of firing, losing some of the sub crew in the process. There was so much fire, in fact, that the sub crew began jumping overboard to get into rubber rafts to avoid being hit. The boarding parties were sent to the damaged sub to capture the German crew and to get into the sub to get the intel Captain Gallery had ordered them to get. During the depth charging, the U-boat's rudder was jammed, which caused it to surface very rapidly and make it circle to the right. Record setting. For the first time since 1815, the U.S. Navy boarded an enemy vessel at sea. As the boarding party boards the damaged sub, finding one German crew member dead on the deck, as the rest of the boarding party starts to enter the sub. The ship is thoroughly searched and sinking. The boarding party shores up a damaged pipe allowing water to enter the sub and to keep it afloat as long as possible. The boarding party shuts down the engines and the sub begins to rapidly sink. So they turn them on again to keep it afloat and continue in a circling pattern with the damaged rudder being locked into position. The destroyer Chatelaine rescues the U-boat crewmen, all alive and well, only losing one to the overwhelming gunfire laid down upon them while exiting the sub. Once all were on the destroyer, as custom has it, cigarettes and dry clothing were passed out to the soaking wet U-boat crew members out of honor and respect for the sea. For the U-boat crew, reality sets in. They can't believe that they have been captured, being teamed up with one of Germany's ace commanders. 
At 1510 on April 9, 1944, U-515 sunk and was lost to the sea as its crew and allies watched. Captain Gallery doesn't get his prized U-boat to take back this time, but that will happen soon enough when the task group captures U-505 intact and tows it to Bermuda. Commander Werner Henke Werner Henke joined the Reichsmarine on April of 1934 after several years in the Merchant Marine. He attended the Naval Academy at Murrowick and served on the Admiral Scheer, a German cruiser. By 1940, he finally attended six weeks of training at the U-Boat School in Neustadt in Holstein. Upon completion, he was assigned a U-124. In November 1941, Henke attended Submarine Commander's School, and on February 24, 1942, U-515 was commissioned with Henke in command. The British used a propaganda broadcast accusing Henke of shooting the British survivors of ceramic a passenger ship that U-515 sank on December 7, 1942. Henke believed he would be tried for war crimes by the British due to the crew of 656 all passing except for one survivor that was taken prisoner and sent back to Germany to a prison camp. Captain Gallery knew this and extorted intelligence from Henke and his crew. Gallery threatened to turn Henke over to the Brits if he didn't cooperate so Henke signed a paper to cooperate with the interrogators. Henke reneged and was sent to Fort Hunt, Virginia to be interrogated and threatened to cooperate or he'd be extradited to England and face war crime charges. On June 15, 1944 at Fort Hunt, Henke ran to a fence and proceeded to climb over. Guards ordered him to stop repeatedly, but Henke proceeded to climb. The guards opened fire and Henke was shot dead with one bullet in the head and two in the body. His body was laid to rest at the Post Cemetery in Fort Meade, Maryland. He was posthumously promoted to Corvette Captain, and in November of every year, the naval attaché of the German Embassy lays a wreath with a ribbon in the colors of the German flag commemorating all of those buried at the site. Thank you for watching War Machine. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.